Hi friends, welcome to Arc Tutorials and this is Angular testing series where we are going to learn all about Angular testing using various tools, utilities and frameworks. This is a part two of the series and today we are going to talk about some fundamental concepts of testing in Angular. Welcome back friends, I'm your host, my name is Sridhar. Welcome back to the channel and let's start the series. Before I start the particular episode, I want to let you know that there are other series available that I have created in this channel, which will help you understand, learn and master Angular. Please do check out the playlist. The links are in the description box below. Make sure you master them. Also, if you are new on this channel, make sure that you have checked out the part one where we have done the project sample project setup in our local and we were able to run it and which is the foundation for all our testing purposes. You will, you can obviously use any sample project that you have, but if you don't have one, you can download it from the GitHub link that I have given it in the description box below. I have also shown how to do the setup. So make sure you follow the episode number one to learn how things are done here in this episode. All right, so let's talk about some fundamental concepts first. There, you will come across words like unit testing and end-to-end -end testing. So what is unit testing? Unit testing is testing smaller granular independent modules, services, pipes is called as unit testing. The focus of unit testing is always a smallest task at level testing. For example, if you want to test a component, it has a lot of features or it does multiple things. You want to test only that particular component, only that particular route, only that particular service method that is called as a unit testing. It, so think of it this way that you provide an input and you get an output for a small method or a component or a smallest piece of functionality that you want to test. Now unit testing is usually uh, it's good if you are looking at smaller pieces of a big picture, right? That means independently you want to verify these smaller granular pieces of your big application. The frameworks that we use for writing unit testing in Angular are Jasmine and Karma. Right, so Jasmine is your framework in which we will write our unit test and Karma is the runner. Then the next uh, thing that you learn is end-to-end -end testing. So what is end-to-end -end testing? So end-to-end -end testing means automating the entire workflow, right? A single workflow. For example, if you are building a customer relationship management software. So an end-to-end -end good use case could be you log in, you go to dashboard, then you access contacts, you create, update, delete, or do some operations, and then you log out. This is an entire workflow, right? <clears throat> that is what is called as end-to-end -end testing. Now, this is absolutely helpful when you are building a large application or the product size grows. You need a lot of these end-to-end -end scripts to make sure that your functionality is not broken. Here, I'm not talking about the smaller pieces. The smaller pieces are taken care by the unit test. We are talking about a bigger picture, the flow of it, right? So an end-to-end -end test will involve multiple screens, multiple operations, many smaller components, right? The framework that is used for end-to-end -end testing is Protractor, right? That's the default one that is provided by Angular in which we write our end-to-end -end test. But off late, if you notice, a lot of business analysts, technical analysts, I have started writing using BDD, which is behavior driven development. And frameworks like Cucumber makes it so easy because it's just writing like a plain English. So in this particular series, I'm going to touch base. We will learn how to write test scripts using Jasmine, run it using Karma. We'll also learn how to write Cucumber Gherkin end-to-end test, -end test scripts for our functional testing. So like I said, there are some utilities which are provided by the Angular. So we'll touch base on that quickly as well. So if you see, whenever you generate a component service or a module or any feature of Angular using Angular CLI, it will generate a spec file, right? So that's basically your end-to-end -end testing, unit test file. So .spec.ts, that's the file uh, that you would see. <clears throat> now Angular natively supports unit test using Jasmine and Karma. We'll see that how to run. So Angular CLI also has built-in commands like to run test, to, to run end-to-end -to -end test, to run unit test. 
and then we'll see that ang whenever you work with any angular application you'll see a lot of dot spec dot ts files which are nothing but your um, uh, unit test and similarly you'll see hyphen e2e -E dot spec dot ts which means they are end-to-end -end files we'll we'll learn about all of this in the next episode but today's topic is only the foundational theoretical knowledge that you should know if you want to answer if you want to talk if you want to understand these are the concepts that you should know by heart all right so and angular also provides easy way to do mock services by using classes and injecting data we can also extend uh, the testing using other bdd frameworks like cucumber zest etc all right so the frameworks and tooling that we will learn uh, yet another important thing to know we will cover first angular cli we'll learn all the testing utilities provided by angular cli next we start writing our test scripts in jasmine we'll start with basic components then we'll grow and we'll fix all the test cases we'll learn how to write and test cases for testing services components modules routing pipes services directives data binding interpolation and much more then we will start our journey of learning cucumber and gherkin writing the test scripts to do end-to-end -end testing all right quick notes on the frameworks that we are going to work with so jasmine framework that's used for our um, unit testing it's again a behavior de development testing but then it's used to write the unit testing right um, it's an open source tool so anybody can use it in their applications it has easy to read syntax and easy to maintain Jasmine has a native support for asynchronous testing. That's yet another very, very important uh, thing to do HTTP testings. And Jasmine supports spy objects, which means when you have a screen, you want to inspect elements, you want to have you locate an element, you can use spy objects, which are extremely useful. And you will end up using 80% of your time with these things. Now, take a look at the basic syntax. It should look familiar to you if you are coming from any BDD world. So it will have a describe statement followed by the it statement. So it is nothing but it's a unit use case that you what you are trying to test. A particular describe can have multiple its statements inside it. Right. So this is just a overview. Like I said, don't worry too much today. Try to get the big picture. Try to get the concepts clear. Try to get the fundamentals clear. The next is Karma framework. So Karma is nothing but it's an open source testing framework for JavaScript. Karma is created and maintained primarily by the core Angular team. And then the framework is natively integrated into Angular apps by default, which means when you get a vanilla application, when you generate a new application, it would have a protractor and Karma with inside it, which can be used to run the unit tests. Now it is done using Karma runner. Right, so it will have a config file where we can configure which browser to run and the settings of it, like the port number, the output directory, etc. Now, Karma is used for running and executing the test scripts. Karma can also play with other frameworks like Mocha, Jasmine, etc. So, think of it this way that we write our scripts in Jasmine, we'll use Karma to run our scripts. Now, <clears throat> the last thing uh, this is these are again open source i said so which means you can club and mix and match these frameworks together to work what we will do is we will club jasmine and karma framework to write our unit test scripts and we will club protractor cucumber and gherkin to write our end-to-end -end functional flows so that brings us to the next framework topic which is a protractor so protractor is an open source end-to-end -end testing framework for angular applications it's built by a team in Google on top of the web driver. So a lot of people are moving from Selenium. So, or maybe our friends are joining us from Selenium who have some experience with web drivers. You'll find them, well, you'll find it easy because it's written on top of the web driver to make it much easy, right? Uh, so this is beautiful because it will work with multiple frameworks like web driver, Cucumber, Mocha, Jasmine, Selenium, etc. Now, like I said, it's used for end-to-end -end testing. So you don't write too many end-to-end um, -to -end test cases. Rather, what you do is you identify the functionality you want to test, and then you focus your energy in writing beautiful, stable, and end-to-end uh, -end scripts which cover your functionality. That's the most important point. 
the number of test cases doesn't make any much sense as long as your code coverage is correct you are good uh, to go all right uh, the next and the last one that i want to cover is cucumber framework so this is another tool uh, that's an, again open source uh, supports behavior development reads exec executable specifications written in plain text now like i said this is getting a lot of um, interest in angular community react community because you write it in plain text and then it validates the software and against those specifications so anybody can write this test they are straightforward easy and you can pass data you can configure a lot of things and it makes easy to test angular or react or any modern web applications let me say that right so the tool that we'll use uh, with cucumber is gherkin the set it's nothing but it's a set of uh, grammar rules that makes it plain text structured enough for cucumber to understand so it's like a syntax for uh, setting up the data and setting up the specifications we'll learn we'll learn about that uh, the idea here for you to understand is these are the frameworks that we will learn these are the frameworks we'll use for our testing purpose please align yourself accordingly get your application up and running which we covered in episode 1 get overview of these fundamental concepts like end to end testing unit testing smoke testing functional testing often these are asked in your interviews so make sure you are able to answer them theoretically as well i will help you teach practically and try and cover from from basic to advanced at the same time i want you also to focus on understanding some of the concepts which you can answer in your interviews or in your questions all right so that being said i'll see you in the next episode where we'll start with our hands on activity of testing applications we'll start with running unit test and then we'll go to end to end test thank you so much for joining i hope you're liking the series if you do please do uh, like the video share it comment subscribe to my channel thank you so much i'll see you in the next episode